internet and Marika Himeti. I am here with Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore. Hello, future cat in New Zealand. That's so much fun. Yeah, we're uh, currently, everybody says, oh, I love your new studio. It's like, we're in Arizona right now. Normally, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. But we do the snowbird thing in the winter time because you don't have to shovel sunshine. <laughs> so how, how has it been? How's life for you in New Zealand? Oh, it's lovely. Summer here. It is hot. It is the sun is shining. And I'm on my Christmas holidays, so I'm very relaxed, very happy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, what is it now here? It's 23 Celsius today. So that is just gorgeous. It's really bright, sunny. I'm standing in front of a window with drapes closed, and now a piece of fabric is hanging on top of the drapes. Otherwise, there's too much sunlight coming in. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's beautiful and sunny. I think we're we're expected to get up to 27 today or something like that. So similar temperature. Nice. Yeah. yeah awesome. But that counts yeah. as hot for us. So. so how was your trip to New York? Because you Oh, it was amazing. When did you go again? And when did you go up to New York? May, April, May, I think. Yeah. It was a long time ago now, it feels like. But it, it was really great. I mean, we went over there for work, so it was you know, mostly to visit universities in New York and uh forgotten the name of the place, somewhere just north of New York. And then we went down to Washington, D.C. and and went to a university in Virginia, Connecticut. That was the other one we went to. And oh, yeah. Yeah. So really great to get to visit you know, American universities and find out how they run things. But in amongst that, we did a lot of sightseeing and visited some quilt stores, which was great. <laughs> did you get to see the modern uh, the modern modern art gallery there in New York? I understand yes. it's amazing. Yeah, I went there. I think it was my last day in New York. I was like, I haven't been to a museum yet, so I quickly dashed in to see that one. And oh, it was incredible! Just so much art and so lots of. <laughs> paintings I recognized so I was like oh I know that that's like a famous American artist and yeah oh yeah very cool so come on Dish how many quilt stores did you hit <laughs> um, does Joanne's count <laughs> yeah okay yeah we'll count that one as a quilt store because they have a really good selection of cottons and whatnot yeah. yeah yeah so I think there was one in New York that was an actual quilt store and then we went to a few other fabric stores because um, the colleague I was traveling with, she makes clothing. So we went to quite a few places that didn't sell quilting cotton, but they sell sold clothing fabrics. Yeah, and the garment district area is yeah. like, my gosh, you have everything under the yeah. sun ever, ever that you would want for garments. Yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, we went to this incredible trim shop that was just all sparkles and glitter. And oh. it was incredible. <laughs> And then, yeah, I went to Joanne's in uh, Connecticut because we were out in the middle of nowhere in this, like, sort of mall place, and that was the only decent shop that was there. And um, then in Virginia, we were in, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the names of all the towns we went to, but wherever it would it had a lovely, lovely quilt shop there. And I discovered that it existed on, like, the day before we flew out, so... I like raced there at the, the end of the day and was like, don't close yet. I want to look around your shop. And was, it was wonderful. <laughs> please don't close, please. You wouldn't believe how much I'm paying for cotton in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I did have to throw away a few clothes so I could like fit everything in my suitcase. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, clothes are replaceable. Like, I know we've, I we have actually bought luggage to put mm. fabric in. Oh, yeah, I get that. I totally understand that. that yeah, we I have would have done that, that, except for I had a, a weight limit on the plane. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that, too. So, what? okay, what kind of fabric did you pick up? What kind of drew your, what kind of, like, ooh, look at that. Like, what oh, was that? All sorts of random stuff. Um, I've, I've done a video, like, showing off all the fabric I bought, so I won't pull it all out and do that again. But um, lots of just... Things I haven't seen here, so stuff that's like new lines or sometimes when it's an old line, but 
we only get like two or three of the fabrics. Yes. You don't get the full colorways. So it was like, oh, I recognize that fabric, but I haven't seen it in that colorway. Some that just was fun. Like this, this is my, I, I want to do some work on this today. It's the wrong way up. <laughs> it's, is that like Christmas cats? Christmas cats. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Is that so that's darling? My plan for today, I would like to actually like, turn it into something. I don't know what. <laughs> you know, you can have lots of fun fussy cutting that, but yeah. I have a fussy cutting horror story. I am. Uh, I'll show you what I did. I I picked up this fabric, right, in a oh, first store. Oh, gorgeous. Right? And it's got, it had all sorts of different lovely woodland animals on it. Mm -hmm. But I thought, okay, I can fussy cut this to, you know, you can measure a few. Oh, you can cut, fussy cut this to four and a half inches square. It'll, it'll work great. And then I, you know, then I'll play with it from there. Well, not all of the animal faces are created equal. So not all of them came out to four and a half. So some of them are a little shy. But I also ended up with a bunch of half square triangles. Then I just kind of like finished making a, like it's a charity quilt for a toddler, right? I thought, yeah, it was, it, it's like really bright. <laughs> so, so, but everybody, everybody at the guilds, oh, it's so cool. It's so cute. I'm like, it's really bright. It's bright for me. So it's kind of like, all right, because there's no place really to rest your eye. But yeah. then little ones, they love those crazy, they love those crazy quilts. They're just, you know. So what do I know, apparently? Yeah. But yeah, that fussy cutting. Yeah, maybe when you're drawing it out, like yeah. you draw it out first to make sure that, you know, because yeah, that, 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 that is a problem with the not everything being different sizes on this, because I'm looking like this guy's really tall and then we've got little short ones. So yeah. yeah. But that is just the most darling fabric. Oh that my is god. It's beautiful. It's like I saw it and I thought, I have to get that because I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it. And it's probably gonna <laughs> but it's just they're so cute. When I walk into a cold store and I see a bunch of you know display of Christmas fabric, I walk past it like this. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. I I always I have like two drawers of Christmas fabric. And I can't remember the last time I bought Christmas fabric, but, you know, every time you get like a um, donation or, you know, yeah. somebody said, well, I'm cleaning out my stash. Do you want this fabric, you know, for charity clothes? I go, yeah, sure. I'll take it. And you've got Christmas fabric. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh. It's like you, you buy it thinking I'm going to make all these Christmas things and you don't actually have time to make more than one Christmas thing a year. Yes. And then, you have all this Christmas fabric that you bought thinking you're going to make so many Christmas fabric. Well, I actually made, uh, I had so I took all my little stuff and I sewed it together just like a crumb square. And then we made, what was it last year? We made uh, the throw pillow covers for my, my oldest daughter. And we had to get her to help quilt and all this stuff. And we were all sick with a cold. We couldn't go anywhere. And it was, yeah, Liz was like, never again. Yeah. Never. They look great. They're so cute. They were just adorable. They're the perfect Christmas, crazy, you know, crumb pillow slip cover. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, never again. <laughs> well, and I think it was, I'm not sure if it was because we were both so sick. Yeah. Or if it was, you know, I was, I was, you know, I can't do this alone. So you're going to ha help me because you want these. So I don't know. But yeah, I've got a couple of Christmas projects I got to finish from a few years ago. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> we got to get that done too. Yeah, but that, I don't know, I like doing Christmas stuff and that, but you you almost have to start making your Christmas presents in like June. Yes. Yeah, if you're, you know, especially if you're making little things for your coworkers and your, you know, family and or things that you want to send in the mail with a card or something. It's like, yeah, here yeah. We are in May, cutting out fabric. Yeah, I know. Yeah, one one year I thought, oh, I could make like little we like mug rug mats for all my colleagues at work, and it would be so lovely. And I forgot that I get really bored if I have to do the same thing more than once. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I like I sewed all the tops 
And then I came to quilt them and I did one and I thought, this is really boring. I don't want to do any more of these. So I just, it took me like four years to finish them. <laughs> Well, you know what's worse than the the mug like the mug rugs? It's putting the binding on the mug rugs. Oh now. yeah, right. Because you you know you sew around the you know from the back you know from the front, and then you flip it around and then you hand stitch all those little yeah. And it's like, oh oh yay <laughs> oh another forty to do you know thirty nine to go. Oh. This is where I I was anything small. I put a flange binding on it if I can, because then you just machine sew it from both sides and it looks really fancy, but no hand sewing. It's great. Yeah, that's yeah. And it's uh, I always try if I'm going to do something, I would love to pick up that glittery thread. Mm. You know, just you know, just because it's you know, usually Christmas fabric has so much glitter to it or embossing on it. But then, yeah, you just, you know, you, you quilt it with glittery thread and nobody sees anything different. But I did end up with a black Christmas print and it's all the little Christmas balls, you know, like the, the that you would hang on a Christmas tree. And I thought, well, well, that's okay. That one's not bad. You can, you cut it up small enough and you will never figure out what it is, right? Yeah, we, we had a um, our final guild meeting for the year. Uh, last week I think it was and that you all had to bring along a fat quarter and then we did that kind of uh, evil Santa thing where you you take something from the middle but then the next person can steal it off you and so on. Oh yes. Round yes. And, round. and I just kept stealing the ones that were the least Christmassy so I could like I could cut this up and no one will know it's Christmas fabric. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what we think of the other the other one is Halloween fabric. Mm. I always have a hard time with Halloween fabric, and I've got fabric here, just close at hand, that is cute, but it's got spiders on it. Oh, I have a friend who would love that so much. <laughs> I have people, too, that would love it so much, but it's like the idea of putting bugs on your bed covering just, <laughs> me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those, well, seasonal stuff is really hard me to work with anyways right because mm. if i'm going to make a christmas quilt i'm going to buy green fabric red fabric gold fabric you know whatever together to make it Christmassy by color not mm. by print yes. right but nor because normally i don't shop in the seasonal aisles because i just i don't get a good i don't feel like i get a good bang for my buck you know you know what i'm saying like sometimes it's you know, it, it's it's cute to have these little fabrics in here with all the different funny little things going on. But, you know, at the end of the day, now what? <laughs> yeah, and you sort of feel like you have to use it like in a way that shows off the print. You can't cut it too small because you'd lose the Christmassy bit of it. And yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Just fabric that you can just use as fabric, but is in the right colors. But, yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah, because then it doesn't matter where it goes into, yeah. Um, I did have, uh, I did get a print, and it's a Laura Lee Harris print. You know, she's the lady who draws, draws those really cute women. She did a whole series on nurses, another on teachers. And, well, the one I'm giving my girlfriend, because she's making a cowgirl quilt for her granddaughter, is it's all cowgirls from Laura Lee Harris. And of course, I found Christmas prints because it's a Christmas cowgirl mm -hmm. that she wants. I found Christmas prints that are very much Arizona, you know, like the Christmas cactus, the saguaros with the, you know, the big cactuses with. The oh, red. yeah, those, those like in the cartoons. So. Yes. And they've ah. got like Christmas uh, lights wrapped around them mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, like a wreath hanging off one arm or something. So I thought, OK, this is fabric. Here, look at this. What about this? What about this? And she was like, yeah, I could use that. Yeah, I could use that. I said, it's yours. <laughs> it's yours. Because <laughs> I don't, what would I do it? <laughs> you know, other than cut it up and hope I can disguise it somehow. Yeah. So, yeah. so what other tra plans do you have for traveling about here? Because you do a lot of travel videos too. And I am just always like, it's so impressed how beautiful New Zealand is. Yeah. Um, I haven't got a lot planned. Um. I went up to Auckland recently, up in the, the far north of New Zealand, and um, we spent a weekend on Waiheke Island, which is kind of like a, a holiday island just off the, the coast of Auckland, and 
had great time there. The rate I edit videos, those videos will probably be done by um, end of next year. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, we had so much fun. We, we like saw dolphins in the sea there. It was just really lovely time. But I don't have anything specific planned for this year. I... For us, for uh, the cameraman and myself, it's hard to, okay, where do we want to go on holidays when you spend five months on holidays? You know, by the time we get home, it's probably at the end of April. And we're, you know, like we got here late November. So, yeah, that's like five months, five and a half months on holidays. Okay, now where do you, well, now what do we want to do? And it's like, we already just, we just had so many holidays. Like, <laughs> you know, let's let's get back into the normal swing of things here and being grandparents and that. You find when you retire, you have less time. My time management skills retired when I did. And I wonder how I get, I wonder how I could work. <laughs> and all of, sudden, just, all of a sudden it's like wow <laughs> you're getting nothing done now right yes i keep looking forward to retirement thinking oh, i better get so much sewing done but i look at everyone i know who's retired and they're like they're so busy with everything else <laughs> well it and it's you go out you plan your life right mm. because now you're planning every day to go have fun mm. so it's kind of hard to it's hard to sit there and go Okay, what am I going to do today? Okay, I'm going to sew this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to chat with these guys. You know, it's like, yeah, you're all over the place. So yeah, your time, man my time management skills like evaporate. <laughs> Just yeah, I I probably got my time management skill fairy. You know, drinking in a corner somewhere. I haven't found her yet. So yeah, <laughs> I th I think I'm going to have enough trouble. I've got uh, I think three weeks off for for the Christmas break and. It, this is my first day of my holiday, so I'm like, right, I'm going to get this done today. I'm going to get this done tomorrow. I, I'm predicting by Monday it will all have fallen apart, and I just I won't get anything done over the whole break. <laughs> but that's the that's the thing when you take a break, you're supposed to relax. You're supposed to like, okay, yeah, like I can put my feet up for you know three hours, and mm -hmm. nobody says anything to me. Yeah, I know. But that does, the reality is it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. No, I and I'm I'm bad. I I have like two speeds. It's like do everything super fast, get it all done, or do nothing. <laughs> I really yeah. struggle with that sort of in between. Just relax and do things slowly. <laughs> yeah, like I right now I kind of more to the oh do nothing, maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe doing nothing is too much. <laughs> That's kind of like... Yeah. I'm sitting like, here chatting to you and thinking, oh, I could be sewing while I'm talking to you, and I could be doing all these other things. <laughs> I know, and we th and we think about our time management so much differently now. It's just, yeah, I I kind of sit there. I was very fortunate to retire early, which was, you know, is a real godsend for me and my health, and you know, with my health issues and that. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, you realize too how quickly. Oh, you know, you haven't got as much time left, so you better have fun every day and enjoy and spend time with people and make relationships, you know, kind yeah. of put the frosting on those relationships now. So, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I get, you know, and people want to talk and they want to do things and they want to, you know, they want to share their life stories and their quilting journeys. And, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. we have a big thing going on now. Uh, what risks did you take? What risks did you take in your quilting career or your quilting to that that proved to be right or proved to be wrong? What risk, what kind of a risk taker are you when you're doing your quilting? And I was sitting there like, I don't know, I think opening a YouTube channel was my big risk, but hey, I could be wrong. <laughs> a, a risk is a successful risk, so that's good. Yeah. But oh, I, I mean, didn't, I didn't tell you. Um, I opened my guild newsletter this week and your photo was in there because the, they always have this little section of like, here's an interesting YouTuber who has good stuff. And so they were talking about your YouTube channel and uh, the quilt along you're doing at the moment, the, the kaleidoscope one. The yes. psychedelic snowflake, yeah. Yeah, so, so you might get a whole lot of um, Christchurch quilters suddenly joining your channel because of that. <laughs> well, that's okay. They're they're all welcome, right? But it was like, you should sit there. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, we we talk. Yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it, that's, uh, 
I know we've talked for a few gills now and talking to gills has really been interesting because we always try and boost the community service program as well. You know, like any, any patterns that you see on my channel, please feel free to use, you know, that kind of thing. Right. It's just because you're out there free mm. and even if it's not for charity work or whatever, you know, it's, they're free to use. And it's, it's, people always, do you mind if we use X or that? And it's like, well, of course, use them. Go ahead. You know, it's, it's not a problem, right? You know, if that's if that's what your members want to do, sure, go ahead and use it for your charity quilts, right? They're like, they've never said no. And I get to always see the show and tells when I speak. When I do speaking engagements, I get to see the show and tells. Those quilters, some of those quilt quilters are amazing. Just amazing what they're doing with scrappy quilts. Like I just, I, there was one guild, they said, they told all their members to bring their scrappiest quilt to the meeting to show me. And it was, I was like, just blown away. So your guild is, is talking about me. So do they want me to, to do a speaking? Or they're just talking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I should ask them next time I'm at a meeting and see if they, they want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ask them. Go ahead. If I if they want me to go speak there, I will. That's not a problem. Yeah. I like I say, I've had I've just been enjoying that whole speaking thing. I was never a good public speaker, even though I did a lot of teaching at, when I worked. I was never good at because I knew my, my material when I was teaching. I was okay with it, but being a public speaker is a different skill, a different mm. skill set for me. And I get so much out of it, you know, when I'm talking to these people, you know, I try and show up a little early and I, you know, tell people if they want to come and ask me questions, you know, or talk to me or, you know, like whatever, that's fine too. Right. So it's, it's finding out what is inspiring others that just, I love it. I am just so addicted to that, you know? So what, what risk have you been taking in your quilting? What risks have you been doing? I mean, I feel like any time I cut into fabric, that's a risk. <laughs> yeah, I have days like that too. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, I, I'm always trying to take risks because I'm always trying to try something new. And it's like, okay, I don't know how to do curved piecing. I'm just going to dive in and try curved piecing. I don't know how to do okay. hand quilting. Um, one of the projects I've been working on recently is actually hand quilted and it's like I, I relied on one of your videos on how to do it <laughs> and I'm sure there's people that are real old-fashioned hand quilters where they are they're rocking their needle they look at that hand quilting video I did and they're just oh, oh yeah wow. no mine is very very big stitches very approximately in a straight line but well, works. and the thing too yeah. is aim for even stitches, mm. right? Not necessarily tiny. Tiny will yeah. come, right? Everybody kind of, oh no, you got to start out with tiny. No, you don't. Yeah, tiny will come. Start with even. Try and make your stitches even, right? So, but yeah, that big stitch. Mm -hmm. I am so glad that's come back into, you know, into vogue, into modern yeah. vogue. The, oh, I before we left Canada. A lady came to me. She needed help repairing her great grandmother's quilt. You know how, like in modern quilts, we do the straight line, a lot of straight line stitching. You know, to you know, because that's kind of a more modern feel. You know, yeah. it's a, a cleaner modern feel. So it was Job's troubles. Now it's all little squares and octagons, right? Okay. Yeah. And all the octagons are joined up by little squares, and it's just it was just a stunningly piece hand pieced. And it was all fabrics. You could tell it was all original fabrics from like the 20s and, you know, 20s, 30s. And Job's uh, Troubles from Barbara Backman Encyclopedia came out in the 20s, you know, something like that, right? Just gorgeous. And it was inspired by tile work, mm. right? So, okay. So that's kind of, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful repeating pattern. So we were, we were talking about this and I was telling her, I said, you realize your great grandmother, when she quilted this, she just quilted this on as straight lines. Mm. She and she goes, well, yeah. And I said, because you can see her quilting lines. She just went, you know, like a cross in rows, right? And and I said, that's today. It's now considered very modern to mm. do that straight line stitching. And I said, it's it's funny how that has swung from a very traditionally pieced quilt hmm. right 
with traditional quilting and everything else into that modern feel, right? And she was, she kind of like, and I was showing her pictures of, you know, modern quilting with the straight lines. And, you know, and of course, and we were looking at her quilt. It was like really eye-opening how that turnabout of events mm. or what we think of as modern, what we think of as traditional. And it was just, it's such a beautiful piece that she had so much repairs to do. On I hope I hope she does well when we get back because they showed her how I would repair it to go about repairing it and you using the 30s reproduction prints you know kind of the, those mm. kinds of things and hopefully hopefully that will create the same look throughout the quilt but yeah it was just stunning just stunning quilt to look at you know but yeah. anyways but me on about art <laughs> well that 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 division between modern and tra traditional that so many people seem focused on at the moment that it's like oh this is a modern quilt this is a traditional quilt and I can't tell the difference because so many of the same techniques and it it sometimes seems to just come down to what fabric did you pick if you use solids it's modern if you use pattern then it's traditional and it's like well there's <laughs> definitions of modern quilting Right. But I mean, with the scrappy rage that's going on, mm. you know, because there's a whole scrappy thing going on too. Scrappy is more traditional mm. than it is modern. However, scrappy lends itself really well to modern. Yeah. Right? Depending on the pattern and all the rest of it. Right. So it's like, you know, kind of, yeah, they're, they're scrappy marries traditional and modern, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what my quilts are. I can't, couldn't tell you if I do traditional or modern because I just do whatever seems right with what I'm doing. Yeah, I kind of I'm all over the place too. I yeah. you know I said, oh, I really love this or I really love that mm -hmm. or I really I should quit doing that because I love it all. Yeah. You know, I'm not you know I'm not selective about I like this child better than the other child. You know, I like it all, right? So it's like even the fabrics. I mean. Yes, I love the really bright, crazy, you know, case facet, you know, tulip paint, like all those, you know, Libs Elliot and Alison Glatt. And I love all those bright ones, but I also like the Civil War stuff. And I love the Reproduction 30 stuff. And I like Lori Holt stuff. And I like, you know, it's like, and Pat Sloan too, right? Like, so we're kind of all over the place here. So, yeah, I like it all. I and like I love being able to throw all those different fabrics together into one quilt and the ones we say, well, you can't possibly put, you know, K facet with a traditional reproduction fabric. Yes, you can. If you pick yeah, the right you fabrics, can. you can totally put them together. Yeah. I have put them together. I made a, a quilt for my little sister in, uh, what was it? Whites, grays, and reds. Her favorite mm -hmm. color is red, right? So, like, you know, like the, the whites had little uh, gray, you know, prints in them. And, you know, so it was very... You know, so the red would pop out and yeah k facets in there like there's quite a few different things that are in there and it's like wow is it really bright <laughs> that red really hops off that quilt right because it is such a pale it's against such a pale palette and red is such a saturated color right so you know it was kind of it was easy to throw all the civil war and the Lori mm. Holt and all this stuff, all the red. You just basically take your red scrap bucket and dump it out on your cutting table and away you go, right? So. Exactly. And that's the thing, is it? It's like if you just had a K facet piece and a reproduction piece and stuck them together, yeah, they wouldn't look great together. But if you put them with 20 other fabrics, they look fantastic together. Yeah, and if you take Jan Kingwell's uh, Jan Kingwell's idea, when you put 100 together, they're great. It's yeah. Fabulous. Don't worry about it. Yeah, if two fabrics don't match, just add more fabric. <laughs> yeah, but eventually you don't notice those two fabrics that clash really well. It's like this the this potato chip thing behind me. Mm. There's pieces in there that they would clash if it was just those two. But, I mean, it looks crazy scrappy and modern, right? So, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. It's yeah, I've fun. been admiring it as I sit here. I love your band. Uh, what is the bunting? The bunting in oh, the yes. yes. I don't have time to make those cutesy little things for my sewing room. My husband or my husband cameraman is on me about making uh, design boards. 
mm. you know, make them this weekend. Don't forget. And I left my hot glue at home. So I'm not doing hot glue. Well, I made that bunting um, when I someone at the union asked me if I could make bunting for an event they were having. And so yeah. they like bought me a whole pile of fabric and said, go and, go and make bunting. So I did that. And those pieces were like my, I've never made bunting before. I need to learn how to do this. So I, I very quickly made those ones to make sure I knew how to do it before I started on the real stuff. Yeah. Well, but is that a two-sided bunting? Like, did you just yeah. sew two sides of a triangle together and then put bias tape down? Um, or? No, it was that one. You, do you do it? You start with a square and you kind of sew uh, the two diagonal sides together. And it all folds into a triangle. Um, I think it might have been a Missouri star pattern or something like that. Because I, I think it was based on using 10 inch squares, of course, because they were always trying to sell you the 10 inch squares. But um, yeah. I just cut a whole bunch of squares to do it. I don't know about you, but the pre cuts for me just, I'm not not loving the pre cuts anymore. They they put out this pack, 10 inch squares, or the five inch squares really bug me. 10 inch, you at least have more fabric to work with. But the, the five inch squares, they've got that jagged edge or the pinked edge. And it's like, not all five inch squares are created equal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a five inch square. It shouldn't be different than the other five inch squares, right? So it's like, oh, yeah. So I don't do a lot of five inch squares or <laughs> 10 inch squares, or I try not to buy jelly rolls unless it's absolutely outstanding, you know, that kind of thing, right? So. Yeah, well, we've talked in the past about how expensive they are here, so I don't buy them very often. Sometimes I do if it's if it's a well if it's on special, maybe I'll buy it just and then I might not use it as a pre cut, but just use it as part of my general fabric. Um, oh yeah, something that I really really love. In which case, it tends to just sit on my shelves there forever, and I don't touch it because I love it too much. <laughs> Yeah. Now, do you buy solids or do you buy tone-on-tone -tone stuff? Mostly tone-on-tone. -tone. I find solids a bit boring. Um, yeah. I do have behind me here, I actually bought like a whole bolt of grey because that's like the one solid that I do use is grey. Yeah. Um, and I've got a, a few smaller pieces of, of solids, but I don't tend to use solids very often. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to using solids. I mean, I, I see them in quilts and minor quilts. I just like, oh, wow. You know, they're so striking. It, it, they're so striking because they're stark. Mm. Right? And use probably, you know, sometimes they've used an unexpected background and stuff like that, right? So, like, you, my unexpected background, I would choose would be over, aubergine, right? Like that really mm. dark eggplant purple thing going on. And, you know, you put all your different brights in there and, you know, you work with it that way, but... I don't, yeah, like I have, I mean, other than solid blacks and stuff like that, yeah, I, yeah, I have a few solid, well, solid white, black but... and solid white. I don't like, and so yeah, find... but those those mid tones like these, I I'm more likely to use those as a solid than I will a, a stark black or a stark white because I find them just too stark, and that's where I want to go for a tone on tone. Yeah, well, with the white too, like as soon as you start laundering it, you know, depending mm. on the water that you're using in your area, I mean, you can gray up a white background so quickly because yeah. you can't launder it. You know, laundering it, you know, becomes a challenge, right? You know, if you have a pet like a dog or something, the last thing you want is white on your quilt, you know, because, you know, they come in from the backyard all covered in mud and they jump on your bed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my cat does that all the time. <laughs> we don't let our cat out anymore, but mm. yeah, so he's, you know, he's, oh, you made this whole big quilt for me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was like, get off, you know, get off the bed. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I kind of give up trying to keep Albert off of a, the quilting table, especially down here, because my husband and I share this great big workroom area in our, our little home here. And yeah, he just wanders across the cutting tables whenever he wants. Yeah, we've kind of given up on that, trying to keep him off and away from the fabrics. Yeah, so we don't, like I say, we don't have any travel plans or anything. I've got, I'm working finally on hand quilting my nosegay quilt. I have put that off long enough. I We got down here and the first thing I did was pin it. And then I pinned it some more. And then I pinned it again. 
And I was like, okay, yeah, we, we can't cheat on, the, we can't scrimp on the pinning, right? Because we're hand quilting it. So it is coming together. I'm getting the ugly color done first. <laughs> I have, I put brown cones on the bottom of the nosegay. Yeah. And I realize now, wow, there's a lot of brown on here for me to hand quilt. So we're doing that first to get the worst part done. So have you got any hand quilting projects that you're in the middle of doing? You said you did, and what are they yes, being? Yeah, I've I've got one that I bought some fabric when I was up in Auckland, which you won't like because it's full of bugs and things. It's, it's a New Zealand fabric, and it's got uh, tuatara, which is a type of New Zealand lizard, and it's got um, a catapo spider, and it's got a weta, and it's got all these lovely New Zealand creepy crawlies on it. So I used that as the basis of a quilt, and then... I was down in Dunedin recently for a, a family funeral and I stopped into a quilt shop because, you know, as you do. Yeah, you have <laughs> and to, I yeah. saw this variegated thread that matched that fabric exactly. Mm -hmm. it was, and it was just so beautiful. And it's like, okay, I've just changed all my plans for that quilt. I was going to just quilt it, but now I'm going to hand quilt it because this thread is so oh, gorgeous. Wow. I've never hand quilted before, but as we said, take risks, just dive in there and yeah, do it. You know. Yeah, just take, you know, by the time you do, like, if you're just doing outlining an echo or something like that, if you're little yeah. blocks, it'll look perfect. It'll look, it'll, they look wonderful. Yeah, basically <laughs> all I'm doing is, um, it's, it's a sort of mostly squares, squares and rectangles, yeah. course. so I'm just like doing a grid of, of straight lines over it, and it's looking good so far, so it's a little oh, bit awesome. of, yeah. I awesome. It's gonna be good. Yeah, the, yeah, I uh I have a brought my pearl cotton eight down with me for mm. you know to help with this, but I'm just kind of like, okay, we have to do this first. We gotta get, you know, some stuff. You can't play with your good stuff yet until <sighs> <laughs> yeah well th this quilt was a I have still many many quilts in my pile over there to to work on and um because I found this thread and it perfectly matched the fabric I'd found it was like well I have to make this quilt now I can't possibly finish one of the other quilts <laughs> I know I'm going to get uh my I have a down here in Tucson I have a 115 a 1915 singer right 1915 singer it's a 1530 and it was an embroidery machine when it was, you know, first, it was a commercial embroidery machine when it was first put out. And now it's been motorized, right? So I got to get Brutus, I call him Brutus, because he's a commercial machine. He wasn't a domestic machine. I got to get him up and running yet. And I'm like, okay, I got to, you know, I haven't hand quilt or not free motion quilted for a while. So I've got to relearn those skills again. Yes. So it's kind of like you don't use it, you lose it very quickly. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh dear. Yeah, I've got I've got some smaller projects to work on. But mm. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. Yeah, I've I have a lot of small projects and I I, I need to be good over these holidays because I have got a family wedding coming up at the end of the holidays and I promised that I would make the like serviettes for it. And I've made like about 10. I've got to make 40. So I'm like, I've, I've got to get on and make those. And I bought some beautiful linen fabric in New York for the, and it's like, I've cut them all out, but now I've got to do those very fine little hems around the outside. And oh, that takes forever. <laughs> And are you doing those fine little hems by hand or by machine? Machine. I'm, oh no way God. I'm doing them by hand. <laughs> <laughs> but even by machine, like, just getting them fine, like, you have to, like, hold them so carefully and stitch them yeah. so carefully. And, uh, and linen, sometimes it wobbles. It does. Right? So, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. But linen is beautiful to work with, mm. too. So do you put things like linen in your cotton quilts? Yes, yeah. 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 It's like, I, if it's in the pile, I use it, yeah. I do too, because I figure it's, you know, it's a natural fiber. It's going to breathe well, so yeah, why not? You know, and just sometimes I'll starch a linen so it doesn't wobble. Sometimes mm. you know, it has that, you know, it's not woven as tightly as a cotton sometimes. And you know, I'll starch them, but yeah, it, isn't that fair? Because I did end up with a couple of pieces of linen that were more apricot toned. Just mm -hmm. lovely. Really nice. lovely. 
Yeah. But they're very much that looser weave. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get going here pretty quick. So I want to thank you for coming and chatting with me today. This has just been so awesome having this fun little friendship that we've been having. So, yes. and I do congratulate you on your 1,000 subscribers. That cool. Yes. That's and so actually, cool. I, I need to, I should use this video to announce that because I reached 1,000 subscribers. Finally. Yes, yes, you should. Yes. Oh, um, please, please I'm do. I'm going to have a little giveaway because I like to do a giveaway when I hit milestones. And the way I do my giveaways is I will make a mini quilt for the winner and it'll be themed on a word that they give me. So I want everyone on my video to leave a comment with one word that you want me to theme of a mini quilt around so it might be a color or it might be a theme or it might be an object uh, for my 500 subscribers video I got the suggestion of sunflowers so I made a sunflower mini quilt a uh, previous one to that was batiks so I made a quilt with batiks so just one word and I will pick at random one of the commenters and make them a mini quilt and send them to them and wherever they are in the world I'm Oh yeah, yeah. So they they have to make a comment on your channel, yes, right? Yes, it has to be oh, on my okay. channel because I'm not going to go and monitor all of Brenda's videos to check the comments there. Yeah, because the comments like purple would be kind of like okay, purple, purple. No, you got to comment purple on. <laughs> yes, put your channel right. on her channel, not my channel. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. But I was very happy to see that you went over one thousand subscribers. It was just like. I was very, very thrilled for you. It was, oh, like, you was very hard over how many years on YouTube? Oh, quite I've a few years. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching you forever. So it's like, yeah. I thought, yeah. Yes, Jeez. yes, they did it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's been a bit of a slow progress. I think because I don't like sticking to one thing. I mean, most people would have like, they would have a travel channel or they would have a sewing channel. I have a, sometimes it's travel, sometimes it's sewing, sometimes it's just life. Yeah. So I, th I think that doesn't do well in the, the YouTube algorithms, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And yeah, it's really great to, I remember getting very excited when I got to 100 because I realized there were now more people watching my video than just my friends. Because <laughs> up until then, it was like people I knew and had forced to watch my video. And so now it's a thousand. It was definitely more than my friends because I don't have a thousand friends. So, but yeah, 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 I don't. Yeah, I, I hear you on that too. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, wow, I've got actually people I don't know watching my videos. That's pretty yeah. cool. It's, a, it's an exciting feeling. You think, well, people think what I'm doing is interesting enough to watch it. That's, that's quite a privilege to have that. It's, yeah. And when Les and I first started too, I thought I thought for sure I'll never get to a hundred subscribers, you know, because you watch it and it's like, yeah, no, it's just creeping along. And then all of a sudden I'm at five hundred. I'm sitting there, yeah, I'll never get to a thousand. It's fine, you know, because you start, you know, slowing down and it's like, and then all of a sudden we hit one thousand, and it was like, wow, yeah, I was like, I was, we made thirty one cents that that month. But we hit a thousand. It was like, yay! <laughs> I don't know why I'm like excited over thirty-one cents, but I was excited. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to make myself rich on this very soon. But yes. oh, no. but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm I'm doing it because I'm enjoying the process. I I have fun with the creativity of making a video, and I like sharing the quilts I make with people, and I like sharing where I travel to. Yeah, especially I love the, the stuff that you do around New Zealand. I have never gone mm -hmm. to New Zealand. And um, because of health issues, I don't know if I'll get there. But I sit there and I think, you know, wow, it's just to watch some of that stuff, you know. It's yeah. just, wow, it's so beautiful, so rugged, some of it. It's just, you know, unspoiled beauty, right? So, Well, that was one of the nice things about the pandemic was because our borders closed and I couldn't travel anywhere else. I had to like look at my own country through new eyes and go, hey, actually there's stuff here that's worth making videos about and I should show off my country a bit. And oh yeah. They, I mean, I'd only done videos, travel videos of like going to, you know, Paris or somewhere like that. And that's, that's great. But look at these wonderful things we have just on our backyard. Go and, go and show that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. In Canada, too, is the same way. I think um, I like, when I like looking at uh, scenery, I like looking at rugged terrain and all this stuff, right? And we have some beautiful, beautiful scenic panoramic views. My daughter and her husband are now living in what is considered northern Canada. And what the area they're in, it's lush and green with, you know, like uh, with spruce trees and pine and lodgepole pine and, and, you know, all sorts of Alberta rose and all sorts of ground covering. I mean, it's just gorgeous where they're at. And of course, they have this amazing lake not too far from them. It's probably the prettiest lake, you know, in all of Alberta. And, you know, you wander around there and you think like, wow, what a blessing we have this, you know, mm. so. But even where you are now, Arizona, I I went through Arizona many years back and that's beautiful in its own way. It's so stark and interesting and the, the colours of the deserts and yeah. Even even the desert without it being in bloom, it, mm. I think is beautiful, right? Yeah. I mean, just that. And we're down where the swarrows, you know, you the the ones with arms, the, mm. the, the big cactuses with arms. I mean, it is just amazing what you know you you wander around and you just i mean i could just look at that stuff all day right so uh, and all those reds different. and yellows in the landscape and i mean that that's kind of that would inspire a quote for me every time I think. actually i uh arizona because it's very dusty where we are <clears throat> and we're alpine desert not basin desert right in mm. tucson um so at cloud when there's cloud cover just before sunset and the dust in the air right the sunsets are like spectacular mm. they'll just the whole sky will be reds and yellows and oranges and and the beautiful pinks that come out of there because because mm. of all the dust and all yeah. the you know yeah the, it's just yeah it's really gorgeous right and the yeah. clouds make it more interesting too sunsets without clouds i just eh, yeah you know they're not as interesting right but as soon as you put that that combination together is just amazing right so and because we're alpine we're in, in around the mountains mountains are all around mm -hmm. us here and we're what 21 24 feet above sea level right so it's you know it's about the same sea level height as edmonton right but there's mountain ranges around us so mm -hmm. the sun all of a sudden goes down and poof, it's dark yeah <laughs> it's like oh okay <laughs> There was no, you know, so you got to get out there and watch the sunset while it's there because it don't last too long. But yeah, it's stunning, just mm. stunning. And, you know, we're not that we're like a day's, good day's drive to the Grand Canyon. Wow. That is, is mm. like, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. impressive. But there's so many other panoramic views, like just going up to Kit, uh, Kit Peak, where the mm. astronomy, the big. Uh, yes, yes I, I, we went up there. I've, I've been there. Yeah. It is amazing because you can actually see on the south side of Kit Peak, you can actually actually see Mexico. Oh wow! You're so far up higher than yeah. the rest of the plateau, mm. right? You can actually see the very, you know, probably the very edge of you know the border of Mexico because you're so yeah, far we, up. Yeah, we went up there we, as the sun was setting, so it was dark by the time we got to the top, so we didn't get to see the views. But I still wanted to go up there because I studied astronomy many many years ago and so it's like oh could be i can know about that place that's yeah yeah and when you go up during the daytime it's a scary little road that you're driving up but the views are amazing the views yeah. are just amazing what you see you know because you see the de the desert floor and you see little spots of green everywhere and you know you'll find a little creek bed and there'll be a whole bunch of green there you know so yeah it's kind of it's interesting, very interesting. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to bid you adieu, yes. my dear. This has been so much fun. I'm so glad you made the time for this. Yeah. And that we could make time for this because I know your schedule is busy crazy and mine's busy crazy. And it's just like, we have to put it on the calendar <laughs> because apparently it doesn't work otherwise. <laughs> Plan months in advance to better get together. <laughs> it's been really okay. great to see you and I hope you have an amazing Christmas. You great too. Year and yeah. Sending the all our best wishes, our holiday wishes and Merry Christmas, all that stuff to you and your family too. Um, yeah. Hey, you take care. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> Love you. Happy day, I know. <laughs>